Good morning. It's time for Faith Art Journaling. Good morning, ladies. Good morning. morning. How are you? Good, and you? Good, good, good. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Faith Art Journaling, where we share our love for the Lord, our love for art, and our love for each other. <laughs> and uh, every week on Tuesday mornings, we gather here together live on Facebook and YouTube to share God's word and connect scripture with some fun art techniques. So we're so excited to share today's lesson, which is going to be the empty tomb. And not only the empty tomb, but it's going to be the empty tomb roll away. And that's going to be a fun little cute technique that we're going to be sharing today. Um, so good morning. How are you ladies doing? Everyone's good. Mm -hmm. Everyone have a nice weekend, I hope. I can see that Annabelle enjoyed a little bit too much sun. <laughs> <laughs> Just a tad, so. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Carol, good morning. So glad you could make it. <laughs> Wonderful to hear from you this morning. So excited to, to talk about the, the amazing miracle that occurred in that dark tomb uh, so many years ago that we're celebrating today. And uh, last week we had such a good time with Silly Rabbit. <laughs> and this one was my favorite. And Meredith, good morning. So glad you could join us. I hope you guys all have a wonderful Easter week and take advantage of this wonderful opportunity to spread the gospel and tell everyone the true meaning of Easter and Resurrection Sunday and Good Friday. And uh, so everywhere, every time you see a bunny now, I hope also <laughs> you'll remember Silly Bunny. Easter is for Jesus. Look how cute. I want to copy. That is really pretty. Isn't this one cute? I saw this one. And um, I think it was like a dollar or two at, um, I think it was Hobby Lobby. And uh, really cute. yeah, so art is all around you. Keep your eye open and look through your God goggles at life. And you'll see so much beauty and creativity around us that God has created and has allowed us to have around us for uh, encouragement. Let me set this down. So, um, yes, that silly rabbit one was so much fun. And the, the cushy, puffy paint. Um, I, I could just sit there and just push it. Like, it's so, just so amazing. I have to say, mine never got puffy and hard. It was just, it didn't work with the blue shaving cream. Oh, really? Oh, oh yeah. So, note to everyone, it needs to be the white one. Good, good. I'm glad I had put that on our lesson. Yeah. Um, as a reminder, all our lessons are available online. If there's anybody new that's watching this um, at a replay at a different time, you could always go to our website and we have uh, all the details and samples of the artwork and the scripture and the questions and the encouragement for digging deeper and great clip art at the end. Mm -hmm. So today with the Rollaway Tomb is going to be so beautiful, such a beautiful message and so much fun. And the good thing about those lessons is you can always put them in a binder and keep them for future use or references. Because I don't know about you, but I'll read the same thing over and over. And every time I read it, I'll just realize something different, right? Yeah. Isn't it like watching a movie? Well, the first time around that you watch it, you, you know, you'll not notice something that the second time around you'll notice. Yeah, I look at things different ever since I've been doing faith art. Like I'll see, you know, the 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 bottle of salt and I'll remember the one with salt that we did or, you know, now the Easter bunny. Like you start to look at things in a different perspective. Amen. Amen. Yeah. And so we should honor cool. God in every aspect yeah. of our life. So I'm so excited to hear you say that, Annabelle. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the goals of Faith Art Journaling is just to get us more focused on the Lord and less focused on ourselves. Mm -hmm. So if you're joining us out there, please be sure to say hello. And if you're joining us for the first time, I encourage you to check out our other videos that we have available on YouTube and on Facebook so that you can get more information about the basic uh, materials that you need to get started. And we do offer a starter kit if anybody um, needs to get started and doesn't have any materials at home. But there is a difference with paper and some of the supplies. And it's not a big deal, but it does make life easier when you have the right supplies sometimes. Uh, a lot of it are household tips, which I love that video. And uh, next week I'm going to be sharing something and i'm so excited our next week's lesson is going to involve either gauze which a lot of you especially if you have boys you may have at home in your first aid kit or if not i'm so excited a dryer sheet 
Who uses dryer sheets, right? Most people do, right? And what do you do with them? You throw them away. So instead of throwing away your dryer sheet this week, uh, keep a couple for next week's lesson. And uh, I'll remind you about that later at the end. But uh, without any further ado, let's get started with empty tomb roll away. So the supply that you're going to need for today is a brad, or it can also be called a fastener. And it's a very tiny piece of metal. And it has throngs that can open. Sorry, it's tiny and my fingers are pudgy. Like Tim Holtz says, I got pork chop fingers. <laughs> the, 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 it opens up. So as you can see there a little bit, so you're going to need one of those, and I'm going to show you why. It's so cute. I love this lesson. So I'm going to flip over my camera so that you can see an idea, have an idea of what we're going to be doing today art-wise. And while we're looking at the art, we're going to be talking about the empty tomb. So this is one sample. And if you look at this, I did a soft watercolor background and this is the tomb and it rolled away and when it rolled away there was nothing in there why because jesus lives amen amen so i'm going to show you how to do this and this lesson if you're going to do it with the roll away circle like that it'll end up being a two-page layout and on the second page i put here john eleven twenty five. jesus said unto her i am the resurrection and the life, he that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Jesus lives. And then I put some washi tape to show the bright light of Jesus. So this is the main lesson for today is going to be this little roll away swivel. And there's another way of doing it that has some texture to it. And I'll be sharing that as well. And the biggest thing with this, I am the resurrection and the life. The biggest thing with the with the Brad Swivel is having two circles. So you're gonna need two circles. Good morning, Shauna. So glad that you could join us this morning. So to cut these circles, you're going to need two sizes. You're gonna need a smaller size and a bigger size. The smaller size will be the background in the page and the bigger size will be the big tomb that's rolling away in the front so that it can cover the whole of the tomb and give you a spot to put in your brad, which is your fastener. Now, if you're going to do texture, I definitely would do all your background other than the section that you're gonna cut first because the cut through texture is very difficult. If you're just gonna do watercolor with no texture, you don't have to worry about that. <clears throat> more as we go. So I want to make sure that you all gather some of your materials. I'll give everybody a moment to, to still be getting settled. And if you decide, you know what, I don't have a bread or I'm flustered today. I'm having a, an Annabelle day. <laughs> Ooh, what did I do now? <laughs> <laughs> if you're having one of those days, um, I'm gonna name it Annabelle Day. Uh, you can maybe use a pin, a push pin with a little thing on top and I bend it. it. If it's or a thumbtack. Or a thumbtack, thumb yeah. It would probably work out better. Or a little a little tie wrap from the bread. Yeah. 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 That's a good idea. Put it in there and just twist it. it. The twisty tie. Yeah, the twisty tie. The tie. Is that if you don't have a brad, you're feeling overwhelmed. Having an Annabelle day, which means you're overwhelmed and all over the place. Oh, and, uh, I say that with love. I just thought that it was funny. Yeah. Because he's always like, where is this? Where is this? So don't fret. Relax about fellowship and about focusing on the Lord. And um, right before we go to the Lord in prayer, I just wanted to share. You can actually just have fun painting on a page and decorating it and then adding scripture to it. As you can see, I started darkening it and I'm going to go through and just focus on God's word and have fun with the font and making it decorative and pretty without the roll away tomb at all. So there's no right and no wrong way of doing this this morning. It's a matter of spending time in God's word, growing in God's word and enjoying some time of some fun Christian fellowship together. But before we continue, let's go ahead and bow our heads so that we can go to the Lord in prayer. 
Dear Lord, I want to thank you so much for this wonderful opportunity. Thank you for technology and thank you for just uh, every woman that is with us today, dear Lord, and that's going to listen to this on replay. May you fill our hearts and our minds with your words so we can just overflow with your love. Please be with us and everything that we do. May it bring you glory, honor, and praise, dear Lord, and help us to rem be reminded today of the greatest miracle of all, dear Lord, that occurred in that empty tomb as they, the stone rolled away, dear Lord, as you did it. Everything is in your control and part of your great plan, dear Lord, and we just thank you for the gift of your son, Jesus Christ, dear Lord, to pay for our sins so that we don't have to. Please be with us throughout this week and uh, avoid uh, help us to avoid whatever temptations may come our way, dear God, and to just go to you and reflect more on you and less on ourselves and of this world. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I know a lot of people feel overwhelmed a lot of times, and the more that we look at God, the bigger we see he is. And the more we realize how small we are and how insignificant our problems are and our worries and anxieties are, because he's got it all under control, right? Yeah. Yes, he does. So this morning, I want you to, to choose, is Resurrection Sunday, is it faith or is it foolishness? Do you believe, do you have faith in the resurrection? That's what this week is all about. Do you have faith in the resurrection of Jesus? And can you be a Christian and not believe in the resurrection of Christ? It was a true resurrection. Jesus died on the cross. Good Friday, the price was paid for our sins. And he was nailed to that cross to bear all our sins. And as he did that, he paid the price for our sins. So we don't have to. All we have to do is accept this amazing gift. Now, he did not stay dead on the cross, did he? His body was prepared. And we're going to talk more about that next week when we talk about um, wrapped man. And we talked about the fact that Jesus was truly a man here on earth. But this week, we're going to focus on the fact that that tomb was empty when they rolled it away because Jesus conquered death. The price was paid. We know the end of the story. You know, when you're watching a movie and you're waiting. How does it end? How does that end? Who wins? The good guy or the bad guy? The good guy wins. We already know that. He already conquered death, right? And he won that for us so that we can live and we can have eternal life. And it's so important to be focused on that this season of Easter. Luke 2, 2 and 3 says, And they found the stone rolled away from the tomb, and they entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. Now, there's some other verses that also, because remember, the Gospels are four Gospels in the Bible, and they all show different uh, perceptions of the same story all about Jesus. Gospel means good news, and the good news is Jesus was here. Amen? Amen. And another verse is Matthew 28, 6. He is not here, for he is risen. And then Mark 16, 4. And when they looked and they saw that the stone was rolled away. And that's what we're going to be focusing on today is that roll away stone and what happened back there. I mean, isn't it amazing? Is anybody out there amazed about that? When you think about the fact that he conquered death, you know, the power, uh, he was truly the son of God and truly God, as we've discussed before in um, not lucky, just blessed. And we talked about the Trinity. It's just so amazing for me every time that I think about it. And we need to be reminded about that in this Easter uh, season of celebration and not get distracted by all the cute bunnies, right? And the chocolate and the brunches. Take time to share the gospel and to reflect on God's word and the true meaning of Easter and of Resurrection Sunday. The snapshot today is because of Jesus, we have a savior who can never die again, paid for our sins, giving us a new life, forgiveness of sin, the Holy Spirit, and freeing us from condemnation with an eternal life. The four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, all account for the details of the life, death, and resurrection of Christ, which bridge the fulfillment of prophecy of the Old Testament and lay ground for the foundation of the New Testament, because the Bible is divided into the Old Testament and the New Testament. The Gospels provide different details that complement one another to provide a full picture from varying points of view, but all guided by the same Holy Spirit. And this section today that we're talking about 
focuses on the empty tomb. You know, Barb, Annabelle, and I all go and see the exact same event. Let's say we're driving and we see a car accident. We each may see different details of that accident from the different angle that we were experiencing. So the gospels are in the same way, providing different details. That's why it's so important to read all of them and connect them. And that's also why I wanted to share the cross-referencing of Matthew and Mark also. So I'm gonna go ahead and dive into the, the art technique. Are you ready for some more art? Hopefully everybody's got all right. some beautiful butters, and I'm gonna share mistakes that I made so that hopefully you don't make them. <laughs> all right. righty. So the first thing you need to decide is texture or no texture. That is the question. <laughs> if you're not gonna do texture, it's easy. But if you are gonna do texture, and I'm gonna show one with texture, because it's the more challenging one. So the first step is to find your, your page. I opened up one of my pages inside of my, my journal. And what I'm doing is you always want to separate the page that you're working on. So you're only working on that one page and it, you're not pressing through other pages. And that's important because every time you're writing or drawing on one page, you're imprinting the other pages that are right behind it. And I have proof of that, by sh and I can show you with this. If you look at this other page that I was painting, see those scribbles? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I had scribbled on the page that was in front of it, and it left those marks. So now when I painted it, I saw that. So mm -hmm. kind of bummed about that. So I wanted to share that little uh, lesson so hopefully you can learn. It's always better if you can learn from somebody else's mistakes, right? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> oh my goodness. So, and Lord knows I make a lot of them. <laughs> circle cutting. There's different ways of circle cutting. I love this creative memories circle cutting system, but there's a lot of different circle cutting systems out there. And you don't have to do that. You could always just punch a hole in the paper and get scissors and cut around it. Uh, that would totally be acceptable as long as you can cut a circle. There's also hole punches that you can use that come in different size circles. But the key is to have one bigger and one smaller. You want the background circle on your page to be the smaller one. So for me, what I did with this one was I got this cutter. And what I like about this Creative Memories cutter is it's got grooves in there that you attach the cutter to and they're super durable. I've had them for years. Annabelle, I think you have these yes. two. They last I have the same ones, yeah. And then they have these, these three blades. And if you look at the blade, there's two horizontal lines. And that shows you how far the cut will be from your edge. Whoops. There we go. That's better. So this one is close to the edge, this one's further, and this one's the furthest. So what I used was the close one and the furthest one. And what I did was I used these things pop open and that way you have the sharp blade there and it's protected so you don't cut yourself. And you slide it there. The two little eyes, because I look at that and I see a happy face. <laughs> and it has two little knobs and then this sharp nose or mouth, whatever you want to call it. You put the groove little knobs and then it slides to to cut so that's how i cut that one and then the bigger circle i did the edge that's right against the plastic and i just did that in a scrap paper i always have scrap paper around this one was from our bunny lesson with the the fun puffy paint look at that i just it's so therapeutic <laughs> it goes up and down, up and down i just <laughs> Oh my goodness. Am I the only crazy one that enjoyed the puffy paint? Stop playing with the bunny tail. Right? It was so much fun. <laughs> oh, how funny, Shauna. I started off in creative memories years ago and then I expanded because I like uh, mixed media and they're very um, strict about only using their supplies to be archival safe. But they've got some wonderful supplies if you don't mind being a little bit unfaithful. And that's the only time that that I encourage being unfaithful is with supplies. Use what you have, use what you like and make it all work together. So for this one, since I'm going to add some texture to it, I did the cutting first, because to cut on a thick 
rough edge is not easy. It, it, it becomes very difficult, <laughs> unnecessary wear and tear on your blades. And make sure that when you cut, you're cutting on a cutting mat. Um, I've definitely cut through things that I haven't wanted to in the past by accident. Bunny tail therapy. That's so funny, Carol. That's a good one. I love that. <laughs> Bunny tail therapy. So the other thing you're going to need to do is the hole. And to create the hole, you want your, your tomb, you need to decide, do I want it to roll this way? Do I want it to roll this way? It's kind of like, where do you want it to pivot? And you need to make sure you have enough space on your circle and enough space on your base to go through and actually have a hole. So what I suggest you do, I want mine to pivot this way. So actually, no, I think I'm going to pivot it this way. I'm going to pivot it this way. I'm going to put this circle as close to the edge just to barely cover that part so that I have space on this side. And I don't know if you can see, but I can tell that I have enough space there because of the shadow of my light. But that's why it's important to have circles two different sizes, the small one in the back, <coughs> the big one in the front so you can cover your hole and leave it just slightly covered. And then pick where you're gonna have your swivel and then punch a hole with a hole puncture. You have the croca, croca tool, crocodile tool thing. There's this one, there's all sorts of different things out there that you can um, uh, poke holes with. And there's also paper piercers uh, that work great. Well, this is my I used paper piercer. Use a paper piercer? Yeah. Okay, I'm looking for mine and I can't find mine. But anyways, there's, and this is the croppa tool, but there's all different ways. And uh, once again, you could just go in and do it this way. So I wanted to do the cutting first because now when I put the, the texture on it, it's going to be harder to cut. So I'll put away my creative memories, goodies. And to make some texture, you can use sand. They do sell texture paints, um, but I'm going to use some modeling paste. And I'm going to grab a little spatula. You can use a plastic knife and I'm going to grab some and I'm going to put it here on my mat so I can work on it there. And I love uh, this idea. I think it was from Tim Holt. Was it um, Annabelle to put saran wrap? Oh, um, I'm I, not sure. Was it or was it from Vicky? I don't remember. I'm not sure. A lot of people do it, but it works out yeah. really well if you put a little piece of saran wrap on your product, if it's anything that's wet. So it'll help keep it from drying out. And it helps it from opening. I don't know about you, but have you ever had a hard time opening a jar? Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. My wrist sometimes <laughs> kill me. So with the saran wrap, it allows it not to. So this is some modeling paste just to give it some texture. And I'm getting some ink so I can give it some color because I don't want the rock to be white. I want it to be a little bit of a sandy color. And so I just mix it around a little bit until I'm happy with the color. And this is so much fun and like marshmallowy. And I'm going to grab actually some sand that I have from a vacation and throw a little bit in there. Always good idea to have a, a little bit of sand around, right? A bag of sand <laughs> a bag in your drawer. drawer. Just keep a bag of sand in your drawer. <laughs> you might need it one day. All right. You know what's funny is that I had a paint that was actually a sand paint and had grip to it, but it was dried up. <laughs> I was like, good thing I have some sand in my drawer. You know? That's funny. Yeah. So this is a little too yellow. So let me add more paint to make it a little bit more sandy color. <clears throat> and once again, if you're not doing this, you can be drawing the background. What I did up here was I used some blue watercolor to create a, a little bit of a background with a big brush. And I brush stroked it there because I'm going to make this side of uh, the sky and background like this. And then I'm working on the tomb part here. And then you can take your time and decorate with flowers and the crosses and, and put scripture in it. So, so exciting. 
and so much fun. And if you have any questions along the way, please feel free to share. Connie, good morning. So glad you could join us this morning. Amen. Let me put the Bible verse up so that everybody can have it in case they're joining a little bit late. So this is a little crunchy and a little harder to, to mix. But with this, you just basically get it and smear it. And you want to smear it in an imperfect way so that it'll seem like a rough edge, you know, the side of a, a mountain, of a cliff. Uh, and you can even hear the, the grit of the sand. So make the shape that you want and see how it gives some, some texture in a little closer. See the texture? Mm -hmm. yeah. I think that's so cool. And you don't want it super thick because then it's hard to close your book. And by working just on this page, it makes it easy to just smear everywhere and not worry about the, the background of the second page. And now I've got a nice big old mess. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna smooth out this edge a little bit and just make it look like little rocks. There we go. I'm not happier with that. All right, so I'm happy with that. And you always want to have a wet towel or wipes. I don't have any babies in my house, but I always have wipes because they're so convenient to clean up these little messes. And they just wipe away your nonstick surface. They just wipe everything away so easily. <clears throat> but if you don't have wipes, you can just get a washcloth that you don't mind contributing to your art supply. But look how easily that just cleaned right up. So now you can work on the area of create some clouds, maybe work on the, on the crosses while this is drying a little bit. And now when you're drying it, there's also different dryers uh, I found out recently that this one is actually a craft dryer. Makes a little noise, but not a lot of noise. And it really helps to dry thing pretty, things pretty fast. But I don't know if some of you out there may have seen Betty. Good morning. Aw. You're so sweet. So good to hear from you. She says, Oh my gosh, this is ingenious. I would have never thought to do this in a million years. This is my favorite class. That is so sweet of you, Betty. And to God be all the glory. So this is another heat gun, but this one is more for embossing because you see how pointy it is? It directs the heat to one specific spot. This craft one has a bigger opening, like a wider mouth, and it will dry a bigger area at the same time with not so much direct heat because you don't want to push things around. Have you guys ever gone to, to use yours, Annabelle or Barb, and you see that it pushes the paint around? Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, mine is already drying. So okay. I'm going to set this aside and let this finish drying a little bit more. And um, also, if you want to work on the next page and it's not totally dry, as long as you're okay with distressed looks, with which I honestly always am, you can put a piece of parchment paper between this page and your next page and just fold it over and work on the next page. Now, the most important thing with your next page is to realize when you open up your tomb, you're gonna see something in there. So you're gonna wanna guide there. So I encourage you to grab a pencil and very lightly give yourself a guide so that you know where you're going to open the tomb and what you're going to see there. Cause that will be where you will want to put, he lives or write down scripture um, or the Bible verse reference or whatever you would like. And then you can take advantage and decorate this whole page. So today's lesson is pretty cool. Cause it ends up being a flip, a roll away, two page layout. Sounds cool. 
We're getting intense here. (laughs) (laughs) Once again, if you don't want to do it, you can say, you know what? I'm just going to write scripture like I was doing here. And I had fun painting a background and adding some washi tape and just writing the Bible verse and being present in God's word and reflecting on a time that he did a miracle like the empty tomb in my life. That tomb was empty and dark. A lot of times we're scared of the dark, right? Because we think that bad things happen in the dark. But what happened in the darkness of that tomb is the greatest miracle of all. Amen? Mm -hmm. Right? So sometimes in our life, we have dark moments and we have dark times. And we don't realize that instead of being scared, we should be looking for the miracle of Jesus that is working in our life. Has there ever been a time in your life that was very dark and you thought nothing good was going to come out of it, but there was life brought out of that. There was change brought out of that. You know, there was a miracle of some sort. And some of you may be in that tomb right now of suffering or of death and haven't rolled away open the stone yet to accept Jesus as your savior. And I encourage you to do so. You know, we're all still works in the making. Our stories are not over. He's not done with us. You know, we are so far from perfect and he is still working on us. But the the there's a lot of clip art and you can just have fun draw or sketching the roll away uh, tomb. And that's available on the website uh, in case you're interested. But um, Annabelle and Barb, I'd like to see what you guys are doing. Um, so well, Barb, what do you got going on? I, I just used... Um, Made my big hole. I just used for this, I didn't use the watercolor or anything. I used my um, Distress Oxide, which was kind of easy to stamp it, you know, to do this with it as like the sky. And then I'm going to do like little layers of, um, of the little, you know, rock, the hill, what have you. So I'm going to do a little bit different. I mean, different, but the same. And I'm just putting my color, like you said, around it. And then I'm just going to maybe do it a little different color here to kind of identify the different height. So that's what I'm working on so far. Awesome. To give it depth. To give it depth. Thank you for finishing my sentences as usual. (laughs) You're good at that. Oh, my goodness. I know you guys are connected in some way. <laughs> How about you, Barb? What do you got going on there, Barb? So I did it a little different. I decided not to do the sand, and um, I just decided to do some watercoloring on my paper. And awesome. I did my circles, and I'm going to attach my brad. And I made a little hole there with my little Cricut tool. Um, so I decided I'm going to put my brad in here. So I have to just kind of figure out that. And then I'm going to um, continue on painting with the crosses up here, like you did with some flowers. Um, So I'm just gonna keep it as a one page. I'm trying to decide where I'm gonna put my verse, probably towards the bottom more, yeah. (laughs) Awesome. Awesome. Great job, great job. And the most important thing with all this is to Focus on reflecting on God's word and the roll away tomb. And today, as we're discussing uh, scripture, uh, because it, it was an amazing miracle in the darkness of our lives, deep where we don't see, Jesus is working miracles too. And our challenge in today's lesson is to roll away open the tomb and reflect upon what Jesus has been doing in your life amidst the darkness. I don't know about you guys, but I'm scared of the dark. <laughs> 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 really dark outside it's scary all those unknowns right i know we were walking last night with the dog and he acted a little funny and or i was like shine the light over there and there was a little snake and we were walking oh. right towards it i was like oh my gosh i almost Good. stopped on that <laughs> <laughs> oh, <my laughs> skipper. yes skipper alerted us <laughs> Pay attention to your animals. A lot of times they know more about what's going on than we do. 
And sometimes they're more observant while we're thinking about what we're going to make for dinner or the <laughs> laundry that we left, you know, drying. Uh, yeah. They're paying attention to the noises and everything around, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, so true. Sure. So I was wondering, you ladies, we talked last week about what was what were we going to do to try to lessen the distractions in our lives as we come towards Easter. Wonder what other the, the other ladies might have come up with, or you ladies came oh, up. That's a great with. idea. That's a great idea because it's true. When we were talking about silly um, rabbit Easter is for Jesus, our focus was distractions mm -hmm. and throughout week has anybody done anything to minimize the distractions in their life i know that for me uh, everybody makes fun of me because i'm very organized so i tend to have calendars and lists but for me that makes me stay focused for me that that just um and and more time in prayer helps me to stay focused uh and less distracted because it helps me to prioritize yeah um how about anybody out there I, someone gave me a suggestion because I want to read more to put that in a, in my agenda as if it was an appointment. Yeah. You know, right. Set aside an hour and put it on your agenda. This is my reading time or my, absolutely, you know, my, you know devotion or whatever. And intentional about it. Yes. Yeah. Schedule it. That's good. Yeah. I have to find my agenda first though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Having a routine and a habit, because a lot of times you can't find things because if you leave yeah. them in different places, it's hard to remember where they were, yes. you know, yeah. and, and I, our, go ahead, Annabelle. No, no, I was going to say, I agree with Carol. She's saying she has to go into another room or outside. It's true. I cannot read when there's TVs around or whatever. I have to be mm -hmm. in a quiet place. That's yeah. a good example to yeah. set yourself up for success and create an environment that is going to be conducive to what you're going to do. It's so important. And with God's word, we need to be intentional like that. If we're going to spend time in his word, we need to do that. We need to have a designated space, time, commitment to him. Yeah. And in our calendar, that has to be in red, not tentative or pencil, right? Yeah. Right. That is true. Amen. Amen. Betty, thank you so much for sharing. I used to be afraid of the dark, she says, but years back after my breast cancer journey, I realized that nothing can get um, my God is always by my side and will always save me. Amen. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it's a testament of faith. It truly is. And praise mm -hmm. the Lord for what he's done in your life and in the darkness of your life. Because I'm sure that when your walk through cancer was not easy, mm -hmm. you know, that was a very dark time in your life. Um, unfortunately I can share that, you know, some of that pain, not exactly, you know, with my son having cancer and it was a very, very dark time. It's a heavy, dark time in your life. And at that moment, sometimes you don't realize the miracles that are taking place. Sometimes it's not till you're out of that darkness and you reflect back that you see, wow, look what God did, you know, for us, he kept our family together. And um, we were fortunate enough that it was part of God's plan for my son to be a living testimony to his miracles because um, things could have easily gone in a different direction. Yeah. But they fine tuned and made me who I am today and has made him who he is today and has made Betty. It's made you who you are today. The compassion that you have for others and the connection that you can have with other women who have suffered through breast cancer or other cancers because pain is pain and we're all suffering. Yeah in different ways and different levels because what bothers you may not bother me mm -hmm. so we need to be sensitive to that and you know we're constantly being refined in the fire of life and it's so important to be focused on god's word and his power that can get us through everything and the miracles that take place in the darkness of our life so the resurrection was so important jesus was totally enough for our salvation isn't it we don't have to give up anything, work anything, do anything. What do we got to do? Yeah. Just accept yeah. the gift of salvation. Mm -hmm. Barb, you have something to add? Well, I was just thinking that, you know, the miracles that you've seen in your lives, I think God wants us to share those with people around us, you know, because some people don't see miracles. And, um, you know, just think of like when Jesus went into um, Jerusalem and he had just risen Lazarus, um, you know, from the dead. And there was, you know, people that didn't want to believe it. They didn't, 
they didn't, they just, they were there and they still didn't believe it, you know? So I think it's something we should share those miracles that are happening in our lives with people around us so they can see God's work. You know, God's always working. Amen. Amen. No pain, no gain, right? <laughs> yeah. But it's every, if we're meant created in God's image and we're meant to glorify him, we need to share our testimonies. And I know it's painful, ladies. And sometime soon, I'm probably going to be posting my testimony that I shared not too long ago. Um, I have a video of it. And it was very painful. It was hard. And it hurt. But you know what? That's my Jesus story. And it's not about me. And who cares what my name is and who I am? But it's about Jesus and what he did in my life. And I am no different and no special than, than anyone here. So if he's you know doing that in my life, he can do it in anybody's life. And regardless of what happens here and what he does in our lives here, our hope is in an eternal life and our salvation that is coming and waiting for us. And we know that price was paid and Jesus conquered death and we know that deal is done. So we can look forward to that. So what happens here doesn't really matter. You know, we're making the best of it and trying to live a life that honors God. It does matter what we do. But it, the outcome be a part of God's plan. We can't get hung up on things because sometimes I know I'm a little bit of a control freak. So when things don't work out a certain way, I kind of get flustered. You know, I have some OCD issues and, and and in a life that seems so out of control, the fact that you can control something like organization or maybe a child or something in your life becomes important. You know, but while we're trying to do that, God's up there laughing. You know, we think we have control. We have no control. We only have the control that God gives us. Everything comes from God, and God ultimately is in total control of everything. Amen. Amen. Absolutely. He is sovereign. He is sovereign. Yes. He is yeah. sovereign. Some he of is. us find that out the hard way. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's true. Um, so please, ladies, share if there's been a darkness in your life that you've come out of. And oh my gosh. Amen, Jennifer. Jeremiah 29, 11. I know the plans for you, for you to prosper um, and for good, not evil. Uh, I'll never forget. I was going through a rough time and my son was going off to college and because of his health, I was worried. And he goes, mom, look, that's my uh, roommate that I'm going to have up there at FSU. And I was like, oh, that's nice. And right before that, I had totally surrendered to the Lord and said, Lord, I can't deal with this stress. I'm just, my son is in your hands. I can't deal with this. But give me a little sign to let me know that he's doing the right thing by going away to college and that it's going to be okay. I need a little comfort here. And right when I looked at that young man on spring break, having some fun, he had that scripture, Jennifer, Jeremiah 29, 11. He had that scripture tattooed as a reference on his, by his heart. And I was like, oh, wait, at that moment, years ago, I didn't like, it didn't dawn on me exactly what that scripture was. So I looked it up and I was like, oh my goodness, just by seeing the scripture, not even knowing what the scripture was, I was comforted because I knew he had to be a child of God to, to put that on his chest. God had to touch his heart in some way. Mm -hmm. And it was, I couldn't see exactly the scripture because he was far and being a young man, I didn't want to go like that on his chest, you know, um, <laughs> spring break, we're out on the beach and stuff. I didn't want to be the weird lady. So I asked him afterwards alone, I'm like, I'm so sorry, but do you mind if I ask you what's the scripture reference that I noticed you had tattooed on you? And he's like, thank you for asking. He got all excited. This young man got so excited to share the gospel with me. And I was so excited to receive the comfort that I found in Jesus through a young man on spring break, just, you know, having to be in the right place at the right time for my son to say, oh, look. He's going to be one of my roommates because he had, I think, like four roommates or something like that. Wow. So, yeah, it's amazing how much light a single candle can give to a completely dark room. Jesus calls us to be light and we can be a light for him in someone else's dark place and make a real difference. I love that. That is beautiful. I 
it. Thank you for sharing that so much. And it is so true. And we're meant to reflect God's light, our light that shines when we're in a room with someone else, giving them hope and guiding them to Jesus is that reflection of the light and energy that comes only from Jesus and from God. We're like a moon reflecting that light. Mm -hmm. And you are so right. It can shine so bright to light up everything. And it can be such a turning point. Have you ever been in darkness? And then as soon as you see a glimmer of light, you turn and you look and it draws your attention, right? Mm -hmm. And the brighter the light, it can kind of just totally consume you and you, you can't see anything. It, it can even blur your vision a bit if you get a really bright light too quick. That's and um, there's probably a technical term for that. I don't know what that is. <laughs> but that light is the light of Jesus that can be in our lives as well. So hopefully you can reflect on all this and reflect on how Jesus has worked in your life. And uh, John Piper, he shares 10 amazing things that we owe to Jesus's resurrection. This is no little deal, ladies. This is huge. This is huge. We have a savior who can never die again. Jesus died, resurrected, and we have life eternal through him. Okay. We know that Christ being raised from the dead died no more. Death no more hath dominion over him. And that's from Romans 6, 9. Through Jesus' resurrection, we also have repentance. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom ye slew, hanging up on a tree. Him did God exalt with his right hand to be a prince and a savior, to give repentance to Israel and remission of sins. That's from Acts 5, 30, 31. Through Jesus' resurrection, we have new birth. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his great mercy begat us again unto a living hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. That's 1 Peter 1, 3. We also get the forgiveness of sin. And in 1 Corinthians 15, 17, it says, And if Christ hath not been raised, your faith is in vain. Ye are yet in your sins. So it's important to believe the resurrection of Jesus, that his body truly resurrected, that he did come as a man and suffer for us and pay the price for our sins. In Acts 2, 32 and 33, it says, This Jesus did God raise up, whereof we all are witnesses, being therefore by the right hand of God, exalted, and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he hath poured forth this, which ye see and hear. We have no condemnation for the elect through Jesus' resurrection. And we have his personal fellowship and protection. We have proof of coming judgment. And we have salvation from the future wrath of God. And our own resurrection from the dead. Knowing that he raised up the Lord Jesus shall raise up us also with Jesus and shall present us with you. That's from 2 Corinthians 4. 14. The Bible is filled with all these treasures, ladies, that just remind us that Jesus Christ came as a man, paid the price for our sin, resurrected, kicked uh, death's butt in the door, <laughs> and we have eternal life through, sal uh, through him for salvation. And that's what it's all about. And it's so important to, to give him honor and praise and share our stories. And uh, so how's your art coming out? Annabelle, what do you got going on? Well, hold on. Got some depth and I colored some more. Here's my. Oh, I love it. See, it's very wet right now. It's yeah. looking great. And then I got to do my little thing and open it. But I have to. Um, looking see, I'm just great. making a little different in the color so I can, I don't know, I'm all about the depth today. <laughs> all right. You're achieving it. That's nice. Yeah. So and beautiful. Uh, taking me a little longer than usual, but. No. And that's the thing, ladies. Remember, you don't yeah. have to finish this entire page today. Yes. I used to rush through it, but not anymore. <laughs> right. It's about the process. Yes. It's about this time that you're spending 
in fact, it. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. It's so therapeutic, yep. isn't it? It is. It is. <laughs> and you know, I sometimes leave it here and I'll go do, and then, you know, later this evening before dinner, I'll come and I'll do a little more and like that, just leave it open on your desk, come back and do some more. You know, if you have a moment, you know, while you're cooking dinner or whatever, something burns, <clears throat> I'll never burn anything, but <laughs> you know, come back, take a five minute break. Do some more. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god! So yes, so true. <laughs> uh, it is so true. Barb, how are you doing over there? Um. Well, I did get some more done, <laughs> and uh, okay. I am. So I ended up just putting part of the verse in. I didn't write the entire verse. Um, somewhat simple. <laughs> I didn't go for layering as much. <laughs> That's okay. I'm happy with it. Yeah. Yeah. I like the, um, the yellow. It's kind of reminding me of probably the amazing sunrise that the women saw at the tomb that morning and, and going to sunrise service. Anybody going to sunrise service this Sunday? Amen. Mm -hmm. I've never been to one. That's got to be beautiful. Oh, it's beautiful. We're, we are going to go to one in Isle Morada in the Keys. Ooh. Where you sit right by the ocean in chairs. Oh. And you watch the sun come up over the ocean. And okay, so that's the way to do it. <laughs> at Whale Harbor. And, uh, oh, um, wow. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Wow. I'm going to go ahead and switch my camera so you can see what's going can on. Can I see where you put your, your verse, like inside the, in the inside circle? Well, there, you can, there's no, remember, there's no writer and there's no, no I know, I know. Just In my previous one, I put the empty tomb and I just put it. Okay. I have the direction in the life there with the reference John eleven twenty five for that verse. Okay. And then remember, it has a second page. So when you open it, right, where I put Jesus it. to her, I am the resurrection, and I put all the the details. Do you believe this? And we have to ask ourselves, you know, do we really believe this? It's so important that we don't piggyback on our faith through our traditions, our cultures, or our family. We need to own our own faith mm -hmm. to be personal. We need to understand the why and truly, you know, realize that this is faith and not foolishness. And in this one, I decorated the Jesus lives and I made some little flowers here on the bottom. And then on the second page, I added more detail like Shauna was saying, to represent the light of Jesus. Mm -hmm. I just I like wanted to put the washi tape. That's really nice. Point of that. That's a great so, idea. And then this is the one that I'm working on today still and uh, enjoying it and using some watercolors. And we had a great watercolor class. And with that watercolor class, there's some great ideas on how to do flowers and some shrubbery in case anybody wants to add a little bit to possibly the, um, the page. Uh, that was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed that. And it was so easy actually too. I was surprised how easy it, it actually was. Yeah. And then you can just add little flowers or different things around and take your time. It's about the process, mm -hmm. right? Absolutely. I'm gonna add some flowers in there and give it a little depth. And darken the edges. And if you notice, I did, I've done watercolor, I've done some marker, I've done some ink, I've done some paste. I've used all different types of mediums, which is important. You don't have to use just crayons or just uh, watercolors or markers. You can combine your different elements of mediums 
And I think that's something that gives it an even nicer finish as far as uh, depth, like Annabelle was saying. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I love this texture. I'm gonna put it a little closer. I'm not sure if you can see how rough the texture is there. So I think that's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. And I know services are kind of limited now, which is so yeah. sad because of the pandemic. Normally there's always a lot more available, but ask around, do your research and don't let it get the best of you. And uh, if in doubt, create your own time of fellowship if you're unable to go someplace by simply opening up God's word. And there's so many devotionals online. You can actually do uh, this faith art journaling activity with some loved ones or with children in your life. And uh, just don't let the day or the week go by without spending time in God's word and reflecting. But just by adding a little bit of a darker watercolor, that's something else. It's amazing what you can do by using the same color, yeah. but diluting it or intensifying it with more or less pigment, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to take my time and do some flowers around here. And then I'm going to focus on my second page where I did the circle of Jesus lives. And I love the, the light that we were talking about before. So I'm going to add a bunch of yellow, get a fluffy brush and wet it. Let me close this before we have a mishap here. Mm -hmm. And for lessons, a lot of times we'll provide some links for different materials in case there's anything that you happen to see that you were interested in just to help you find it. Because sometimes it's not always easy to find. Here, instead of the washi tape, I'm starting off with paint and then I make over with washi tape. Yeah. Right? Layer it. Yeah. Gives yeah. it a nice base color. Exactly. Yeah. Layers make a big difference. I love layering. Right? Yeah. And I like using the material I have. It makes me feel good that I'm using all my stuff. <laughs> right? It's so true. Yeah. It is so true. And I'm going a little messy here because, to be honest with you, I wasn't sure my brown marker that I wrote Jesus Lives, I wasn't sure if it was alcohol-based or not. It is because it hasn't bled. Uh -huh. Because it water on water it's going to bleed and smear and make a mess and hmm. you don't want that when you're writing something down so that's important to keep in mind you need that contrast so any other questions around there feel free to share <clears throat> I'm excited to hear about your sunrise service, Barb. That sounds great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. It's beautiful. It's pretty well attended. Well, this is going to be different this year, but yeah. But it's outdoors, so, you know, people, I think, feel a little bit safe being outside. Huh. Yeah, <laughs> out everything is more and more outdoors. It's crazy how everything has just changed so much. That's for sure. It has. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Comment there. Exactly. Had to oh be. Oh my gosh. Had to be. <laughs> so that's her husband for anybody out there reading that crazy comment. I'm going to ignore that. I'm just going to ignore that and keep going. <laughs> You know what? How cute is it that he's he's popping in to say hello? That we is love you and hope you have a wonderful day, Raul. Raul. <laughs> behave, okay? <laughs> Nobody yeah. needs to know how crazy we all really are, okay? <laughs> is he in the other room? <laughs> no. <laughs> he's working. <laughs> so the big thing with today is the swivel 
to allow for this double page layout. So this secondary page right here, I'm just going to be drying it. So I have this background of the sun uh, being bright because I want to represent and focus on Jesus's uh, conquering of death and that he lives and I'm creating this background. And this will provide me with all this space to write the entire Bible verse, which is something that I love because so often put the the artwork and there's not much space left for the Bible verse. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Meredith, everybody's checking out your hair now, Annabelle. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Oh, I, I can't turn much more red because I'm already sunburned, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> oh, oh, Sarah, thank you so much for sharing. Yes, if you have different um, services that uh, you would like to share, that would be great. We all love to share resources. And it's so important to share God's word and, and resources that he provides. Uh, how often do you go to a restaurant and you say, oh, you got to try this restaurant because it was good? Uh, how are we not going to share God's word? and opportunities. So I'm gonna let this dry a little more, because remember, if you've got water and you go to, to draw with a water-based marker of some sort, and there's so many different markers, all different kinds. Uh, Sharpies are great for outlining and writing because they are alcohol-based, so they won't smear. So I tend to be obsessed with Sharpies and I have them in all different colors because you can literally, put other watercolor on top of them and they won't smear. So if in doubt, always test it. Always have a, a scrap piece of paper. Look at this scrap piece of paper that I have next to me. And I always test things out there because that way when you put water on something, you can see, okay, is it gonna smear or is it not gonna smear? And that'll help you to be sure. Because the last thing that you wanna do is to go through the trouble of making something beautiful and then it smear and become a mess. But look how cute this page is coming out. And it's not done. We have our little swivel. Jesus lives. And then when you open it, we're going to have the sun there. And I'm going to do scripture here. And I'll post it afterwards. But hope you ladies all enjoy this little technique idea connecting scripture to art, which is just so important. And such a fun way to spend in God's word. And uh, now with spring break. Uh, you may have kids or have access to kids and you can share this and so many other ideas. We have a ton of videos available online on Facebook and on YouTube. And if you subscribe to our YouTube channel, you'll be alerted to any new videos that we have. So please be sure to, to like us and, and share. It's just such an easy way to share God's word. And we need to be thinking about God's word. It's not good enough just to read through it. Um, slow and steady wins the race. And uh, we want to make sure that we focus on quality, not quantity. What good is it to say, oh, this year I read through the whole Bible. Okay, what did you learn? I'd rather, mm -hmm. right? right? So often you read through something and it's like, wait, what did I read? Mm -hmm. I cannot be alone, ladies, right? Oh, Come no. on. I'll have to reread it. Right? Mm -hmm. it's like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. And then me, I start drawing pictures about what I'm reading. I was that kid that was always doodling in class or doodling in church. You know, they thought I wasn't paying attention. I was paying attention. I was just drawing what I was thinking and trying to remember it and understand it. And it was just the way that my mind worked. But it's so important. And, you know, with today's lesson about the empty tomb, we need to be reminded God brings life and works miracles in darkness, such as when he rose from the dead in a dark cave and without a trace without a trace it happened so we need to be reminded what the importance was of the resurrection which is what jesus conquered death he rose and because of him we can have eternal life we have that hope to hang on to that comfort that we can find in him Jesus was enough for our salvation. If you're trying to work your way to heaven, you're saying Jesus was not enough. Ladies, how can we say that? Jesus is part of God. The Trinity is one God. Three roles. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. God sent Jesus, a part of himself, down here as man to pay for our sins. Are we saying God's not enough for us? That we need to do something else? God is enough. 
Um, how are we offering our lives to be crucified in death and raised up anew? Are you dying to self? Are you dying to your flesh the way that Jesus died on the cross? We need to die of ourself and be renewed in Jesus, meaning to die of sin and focus on him and to be anew with our eyes on him, accepting of him and living a life that honors him as a child of God. We want to know him and live a life that reflects his image. And we can only know that by getting to know him more. And the last thing that I'd like to mention, because I already see that time is getting away from us, is how many times have you been born? And how many times will you die? <laughs> how many times have you been born? How many Twice. times will you die? <laughs> Amen, Barb, go ahead and explain it. <laughs> Well, you're born of, you know, natural birth, um, but then you have your spiritual birth when you're born again, when you accept Jesus Christ into your heart and um, the, he becomes Lord of your life and that's your spiritual birth. And then you die once and you go to heaven with him. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So you definitely want to make sure that we are born twice and we die once instead of being born once and dying twice. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. So we have to hold on to our faith and hope. Being therefore justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom also we have had our access by faith into the grace wherein we stand. And we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. So do you believe God's word is true? If you believe it, then we need to know that Jesus is enough to pay for our sins for salvation, that he conquered death and that we have the hope and we can rest in the comfort knowing that we have eternal salvation. Amen? Amen. So hopefully, anything else you guys, ladies would like to share? Um. Well, I was drawn to the lyrics of the um, song, It Is Well With My Soul. Oh, yes, that's beautiful. You know, that one. And then um, I like the one verse that says, um, my sin, oh, the bliss of this glorious thought, my sin, not in part, but the whole, nailed to the cross and I bear it no more. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, oh, my soul. And then it goes, it is well with my soul. So that's, that's the assurance you have when you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and believe that he died and rose again and is up there waiting to come back <laughs> and get his kids. Yes. Amen. Amen. <laughs> so beautiful. So beautiful. And there's so much scripture that supports all this. Um, another beautiful one is Romans 5, 9, salvation from the future wrath of God, much more than being now justified by his blood shall we be saved from the wrath of God through him. He saved us. Sin is all the bad things that we think or we do. We sin all the time, even though we may you know, not show it on the outside. We're sinners on the inside by our bad thoughts and our evil thoughts, and it happens. We are justified by the blood that was shed with Jesus. Amen. That perfect blood that was without sin carried and bore all our sins. Um, oh, wonderful. Yes. I love for everyone to share different resources and, uh, Meredith, thank you. Jesus is enough. He is the only way to God and salvation. Amen. I'm going to take a picture of that one. Everybody look up a second. Annabelle. <laughs> All right. You'll probably see that on social media at some, at some point. And it's true. There's so many beautiful songs that have rich um, theology, and we need to be aware of what's coming out of our mouth and what we're hearing, because it all fills our heart and our mind and our thoughts. You know, they don't come from, and when you have nightmares, they're not coming from nowhere. They come from something. They come from something we saw, something we heard, something we experienced, a fear or anxiety that we may have. It stems from something. So it's so important to be aware of it. And we need to spend more time. And we're less with distractions and more time in the word of God. 
So when you ladies finish up your pages or even while you're working on your pages, please be sure to post a pic and hashtag faith art journaling all together one word and we'll, that'll put you in as a possible winner for our lesson blessing prize Ooh, Ooh, we haven't done it yet. it's such a fun way to share god's word ladies and to lift up other people we need to remember that you know god is working in the darkness of our lives he's worked in the past darkness of our lives and he's still working in our lives and there's people out there that may be all alone, and this may be their only time of Christian fellowship, their only time to connect with another woman that can help them understand that they are not alone. We are all in this together. We are all sisters in Christ. And, you know, we love you. We love the Lord. We love each other. And we're praying for you, whoever you are and wherever you are right now. And whatever burdens you're carrying in your heart and in your mind, we are praying for you. And know that you've got a, a God who loves you and Jesus that is with you every step of the way. Not that it's going to be easy. Nowhere in the Bible does it say it's going to be easy. It's the opposite. But he will be with us every step of the way. And once again, the, the race is won, right? The battle is one. Jesus conquered death. We will die no more once we accept Jesus as our personal savior. Amen. So let's see what good we have today. All right. As everything falls in my room because of everything balanced. <laughs> <laughs> this is like, oh my goodness, everything fell. <laughs> everything fell. <laughs> Uh oh, it's an Annabelle day. Remember, yeah, Annabelle day. The thing is, a big box. So, ladies, cut me some slack, okay? Whoever's laughing at me because I dropped everything. It's a heavy box. Oh my goodness, I could never be a a server. I would drop everything. <laughs> this box of goodies. Are you ready? I'm ready. Drum roll. Go. I've got this beautiful packet of stickers and papers, and these papers are great quality, and they are two-sided, and they're 12 by 12, so they're nice and big, and you can cut them, but look how pretty. Oh. And pull the edge or use both sides, and they're all complementary colors, so they're all different patterns. We've got stripes and very pretty decorative mm. oh these are clouds yeah it's very spring like you're lucky i didn't see that cloud one i would have pulled it out and probably kept it <laughs> <laughs> i got an idea for a lesson for that one already and that's something else you can use all this for scrapbooking for photos or you can use them uh for faith art journaling to make cards to make tags there's just so much that you can do but this is a beautiful um packet of very great quality double-sided paper and stickers and look how pretty that is aren't those colors mm -hmm. beautiful? Mm -hmm. pretty to a really good friend of mine named taddy who made a donation for faith art journaling uh as a reminder thanks daddy uh, any purchases that you make of lessons online go to help fund this ministry and these wonderful prizes and look how cute wow. is this wow pineapple Really? And it's sparkly. Wow. And then, like it. So it's sparkly inside and out too. It's really pretty. So uh, this can be used as a photo album. It can be used for faith art journaling pages. You can use it for whatever you want. Even if you have maybe some large uh, photos. I don't know about you, but I have portrait photos of family um, that you change from around the house. And it's like, what do I do with this big photo? You can put them in here and how beautiful and pretty this is, mm -hmm. right? That's nice. Gorgeous. So, let's see who's going to be the lucky winner for this beautiful album and paper pack set. It's so pretty. Uh, where's, here we go. Our lesson blessing winner. Okay, now the drum roll. Annabelle. Now the drum roll. <laughs> you got one paper. Oh, Carol! Woo! <laughs> Congratulations, Carol. So please direct message me your personal address or where you'd like it shipped to so I can confirm I send it to the right place and I will get that out there to you today. And for the rest of you, please be sure to 
post a picture of something inspirational that has to do with any of the lessons that we're doing and hashtag faith art journaling just to help us to spread God's word and to just lift up each other. We want to do encouragement and inspirational opportunities for other people. Um, I'm actually thinking about doing a, a possible podcast. Uh, it would be called Faith Art Journaling Inspirations. And um, I'm thinking about doing that to coincide with our lessons. So as here in Faith Art Journaling, we do a lot of talk with technique and the art. We can do a podcast for somebody that's not into the art part, but just wants to hear the lesson part. Um, if anybody's got a comment about that, uh, if a good idea, a bad idea, something you'd like to hear or do, please, we want to hear from you. We love the feedback. Um, it's I enjoy Barb and Annabelle, but it's nice to know that we're not here alone uh, doing this. And if it's save one soul or if it's to provide encouragement and inspiration to one person, it is worth doing this the rest of our life because we love you and we are here for you and praying for you. And next week's lesson wrapped man. Jesus came as a man, flesh, and he was literally wrapped as a man when he uh, was crucified. And uh, fortunately, he didn't stay there, right? The wrapping was left, no evidence other than that. And I'm not going to give away any more details about our lesson next week. But for the art part, you will need, once again, you don't have to use anything. You can just sit there and doodle and draw or write the Bible verse and color, and that's fine. But we're gonna be working with a bounce. Uh, this one's bounce, but you can use any dryer sheet. Uh, if you don't have a dryer sheet, which I love this whole recycle, recycle, being kind to our earth, right? And- Gauze, maybe? Gauze, mm -hmm. exactly. Right. A piece of gauze. Okay. Well, I'm thinking, Connie asked, what if you don't have social media? How can you share uh, our art? What I would do is I have group chats with my church and I have group chats with Our Ladies Ministry, which actually, Connie, uh, I believe you're a part of one for our Friday morning group. And uh, I, would, I would do it that way. You can text people individually. If you have any group chats, I think group chats with groups of women can be very encouraging and very inspiring. That's another great way to, to share your art. But for you participating in today's lesson, you'll be entered. So if it's about being a candidate to be a lesson blessing winner, you're here, you're good. But we would like you to just hashtag faith art journaling and um, share God's word. And it's not about me, Barb or Annabelle. It's about God and sharing his word. And we want the focus to be on him. And this is just such a fun way to do it. Kendra, so glad you were able to join us today too. Shauna, loved what you shared with us today and Meredith and, and Connie. Um, we're just so thrilled that even Raul stopped by. <laughs> and thank you for behaving, Raul. We appreciate it. Um, <laughs> why is it when I think of Raul, I think about that joke that they say that every family has a crazy person. And if you oh, don't know yeah. who that is, it's probably you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So in Annabelle's family, I guess maybe it's Raul. I don't know. No comments. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love them. I love them. And I bought their chops because they're like brother and sister sisters to us. Um, I want to thank the Lord publicly for just a beautiful um, gift that he's given to us of such wonderful friendships with Barb and her husband, Al and Annabelle Raul and so many other friends too, that uh, we're just so blessed with. So um, you get what you out here. Like All right. We're blessed too. <laughs> Well, we are. God said, we ask about God working here on, on earth. And is he here? And he is through the loved ones around us. And he provides that comfort and support. How often are you in need of a hug or to be lifted up in your spirit? And all of a sudden you get a phone call or you get a text yeah. right when you needed it. Right. Next month, so I was in tears because I was going through a very difficult situation with my parents. And at that time that I was just feeling flesh weak, spiritually weak. All of a sudden I got a text and I was like, oh my goodness, the Lord knew I needed my spirits to be lifted. And all of a sudden I got so excited by the person that reached out to me with encouragement. And, you know, we all have our, our times 
that we need encouragement. And that's why it's so important to be here. Oh goodness, Kendra, I'm so sorry to hear that you're sick with COVID. Wow, we're praying for you. And we really hope that it goes really smoothly for you and that you're uh, not one of the long haulers or anything uh, complicated. We have other uh, viewers also that have had COVID. Um, I've been spared, uh, thankfully, so I can't uh, tell you that I relate to what you're going through, but I can't imagine that it's got to be scary. And I hope you know, Kendra, that you're not alone. We're all here praying for you all the time. And we got a Bible study on Friday mornings with a beautiful group of women that we have a wonderful time with. And we're actually studying conversation peace right now, which has to do with uh, the tongue can be a tool or a weapon because so often we speak and something uh, can come out in a different way than we intended. It's a wonderful Bible study and everybody's welcome to join us. If you direct message me, I'll be happy to share the link so you can join us because that's through Zoom. That's not live on social media. It's a private small group of women. And um, we'll be praying for you, Kendra. Hang in there and and just stay focused on the Lord. Stay busy in the Lord. Um, I, I think it was you that shared uh, an empty mind is the devil's playground. I think it was you that shared that last week. And that's so true. So keep your mind filled up with the word of God. You can check out all our videos. We've got a ton already. And you'll have plenty of art to do to enjoy yourself. Put on the Hallmark channel. Have some popcorn. <laughs> make make the best of it. Make it a retreat. Make it a sabbatical. You know, renew and refresh your mind with the Lord in this time. It's a gift. It's a gift to be still with the Lord. And sometimes you look at it as you know oh no i'm sick i gotta stay home or i need to be isolated but there's so much positive things that can happen remember those that those dark moments can have the greatest miracles of all Amen. so hang in there we love you all and um i would love to keep chatting uh but we're well over an hour almost an hour and a half oh my goodness <laughs> like keep talking keep talking but uh, i guess we need to go everybody needs to to uh, go to work or do other responsibilities. And I wanna be respectful of your time and not abuse it. But we'd love to hear from you ladies. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for choosing uh, this time with Faith Art Journaling. And we hope you'll continue to join us every Tuesday morning, 9 a.m. live on Facebook and YouTube. And please like and share our videos. It helps us to get more attention, to get the, the word of God out. And uh, if you do need materials, our website does have a beautiful starter kit that is available to you if you don't know what to get. And we also have videos that show what's in it. Uh, a lot of things you probably have around the house that you can kind of gather up, especially if you have a child that ever did a science project. They usually have markers and a glue stick and some basic supplies. Uh, the biggest expense, and I think the most important thing is the journal, the mixed media journal because the mixed media journal is going to be the basic for all your work and you want the paper to be durable and not fall apart when you do these projects. Um, so that's important because if not, the paper can fall apart if it's too thin and you're using the mixed media techniques. So if you have thin paper that's not mixed media, just draw and don't use anything wet. You can use pencil, uh, crayons, markers, things of that nature. So any last words, Barb and Annabelle, before we say goodbye? Have a beautiful week. Happy Good Friday and Easter and everything else. <laughs> yes. Amen. Resurrection Sunday, Easter. <laughs> yes, yes. And enjoy your morning services and Good Friday services. Our church uh, that we attend is New Testament Baptist Church, and they do have online uh, services as well as in person. So I love that, that you can actually see online from anywhere that you're at. And it's ntbcfl.org is their website, NTBC, which is New Testament Baptist Church, FL, because they're in Florida. So ntbcfl.org. And uh, they do have a Good Friday service and a Sunday off the top of my head. I'm not sure this year, year what's going on, but there's usually always a sunrise service. And so excited. Barb, post a picture and hashtag Faith is Growing so we all yes. can see. Okay. Yeah, okay. Figure that out. You know, I'm social media challenged. <laughs> you can do it. We all are. We all are a little bit, and we're learning as we go. Um, this whole world of social media is pretty new to a lot of us. 
but we're doing the best that we can. And if we're doing it for the Lord, we can't go wrong. Amen. That's true. <laughs> All righty. Have a great day. Hey, privately so I can send you your box of goodies. I'm so excited. <laughs> a beautiful pineapple in the front. It's really pretty. <laughs> and Shauna, Kendra, everybody, Meredith, Myrna, if you're watching later, and Pinky and Janae and everybody. And Jennifer, so glad that you joined us. Have a fantastic day. Love to you all. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. <laughs>